right, hey, good evening, folks. Once again, we are back taking a look at the tropics. Tonight is Tuesday, September 20th, 2022. This is your evening tropical update. We are tracking a busy Atlantic basin this evening. We still have major Hurricane Fiona now moving away from the southern Bahamas. She'll take her sights set for Bermuda and Nova Scotia and Newfoundland throughout the rest of this week with um, some significant impact expected. We have newly formed tropical storm Gaston out in the northern Atlantic. Not going to bother anybody, but did take a name off the list. We have the big ticket this evening, which is, of course, Invest 98L, a tropical wave moving through the central Atlantic. Uh, tropics is going to move up into the Caribbean sometime this weekend, where some significant development is possible. Our computer models are screaming doom and gloom and telling everyone in Florida and the Gulf Coast to run for the hills. We're going to talk all about that system, obviously. And then we also have another wave leaving Africa here soon. And this system is expected to pull northward and not impact us. So the Atlantic Basin on the National Hurricane Center's map suddenly looks like peak hurricane season. We're a little bit past the peak. But the season has finally woke up and delivered a season worth talking about. So we have all our main players here, and we could have one or two more name storms by this weekend. So let's start with Fiona, the latest on Fiona. She's still a Category 3 hurricane tonight. Looks fairly impressive. Has not intensified that much today. The kind of It's kind of been steady state for the most part. Uh, the wind shear on the storm is still enough to cause some issues. You can see this side of the storm is a lot flatter than the outflow on this side of the storm. There's really The outflow doesn't really go very far in this direction, but it way goes off here and here. Uh, so Fiona has kind of dealt with that wind shear, but she's going to overcome that. The IR presentation is showing that tonight, the central dense overcast around the eye, these black and white clouds around the eye. Notice how they're starting to build and they're starting to become more uniform around the eye. They start ragged right here, a burst, a wrap, it falls apart, another burst, another wrap, and then that time it kind of sticks, a white stick around the eye. That's the storm building the central dense overcast, the eye wall is improving, the structure of the storm is improving, and the eye is remaining out of the clouds, indicating that it's got a good bit of stability to it. And um, Fiona is likely strengthening tonight again. Hurricane Center has us at 125 miles an hour as of the 8 p.m. advisory. So she is stronger than they had her at 5 p.m. Now close to Category th uh, 4 intensity, not quite there yet, but pretty close. Movement to the north-northwest at 8 miles per hour, and she'll slowly crawl away. Hurricane conditions still in the Turks and Caicos for a few more hours. Those should drop off tonight, and uh, she'll be moving northward and eventually northeastward. Uh, away from them. Now, Bermuda is going to get past the storm. If we zoom in the forecast, coming a little bit, tropical storm watches are up for Bermuda tonight. It, the confidence is high enough now that they're probably not going to take a direct hit, but again, jogging this track on either side of the cone of uncertainty is a big deal. Fiona takes more of the left side of this. They get grazed. A little bit of tropical storm conditions, probably not all that bad. You take the right side of this cone, and you're getting a very bad time. You could absolutely still have significant hurricane force conditions in Bermuda on Friday. So tropical storm watch for now. I would at least expect a hurricane watch. And uh, depending on which side of this track she takes, you could, you guys there could still be getting slapped pretty hard. So um, definitely have a lot of respect for Fiona until she's up and out of your, out of your hair. The good news is it's going to be moving pretty quick, so the impact shouldn't last too terribly long. And we go back to the five-day forecast. We see her moving into Nova Scotia and Newfoundland this weekend as a powerful extratropical cyclone. The system will be getting entangled in the jet stream, so it will become more of a winter storm type system. And uh, it's going to hit them pretty hard. Hurricane Center still thinks she'll be packing winds near 100 miles per hour uh, up at this point on Saturday. This is going to be a huge, powerful storm when it, when it finally makes that transition. So folks up there, I would be glued to the forecast. I'd be expecting a whale of a storm if I was you. Let's go over to the IR presentation of Gaston this evening. Tropical Depression 8 came became Gaston pretty quick. And this thing, like, basically just skipped tropical storm status. It's like a, it's like almost a hurricane already. I don't know what on earth happened. But uh, Gaston, you know, you have this ball of convection. And then all of a sudden, it just has an eye feature. Just boop, eye comes out. And it's not like some, like, freak thing in the clouds because our microwave imagery also shows that it had an eye structure earlier. It had a little, little partial, um... Spiral band, a little bit of a primitive eye wall structure trying to form, and um, I mean, it's just kind of wit for it. So I don't know, maybe perfect conditions, right place, right time, a little bit of an upper upper level influence helped it out. I don't know. Uh, Gaston is dealt with threat to land, so I'm not too worried about it. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. Very interesting storm. I would love to see what the 11 p.m. from the Hurricane Center is and how fast they think it's strengthened because uh, they may have to go back and possibly kind of reorient this in the post-storm analysis they'll they'll go back and you know see if something they miss something here but 
pretty impressive little thing. But uh, not going to bother anybody well away from land. The Azores, keep an eye on it. Could have some tropical storm conditions in the western Azores over the weekend. But Gaston will basically move northeastward until the giant thing that Fiona would be at that point will start to pull it backwards. And then they'll get all gobbled up and they'll race off into the sunset together. Good for them. All right, let's go ahead and talk about the big ticket tonight. Invest 98L. This is a tropical wave moving through the central Atlantic. And this is the big ticket one. This is the one that everyone's freaking out about. The one that's showing all the doom and gloom on the GFS and the Euro and the giant hurricanes in Tampa and Tallahassee. And oh God, um, as always with these storms before they formed, they, when they are still tropical waves, you've got to be careful with computer models. And you've got to understand that until a storm coherently forms, it is spitballing on spitballing on spitballing. It is trying to predict the outcome of three race cars where I don't tell you what motors they have, what kind of chassis they have, and where they're even going to start and what I put in the gas tank. I mean, it's like I could guess, but I don't really know because I don't have enough to go off of. Once this forms, I say, okay, they're all making this much horsepower and they're all going to start here. And it's like, okay, well, that's more helpful than nothing, you know. So don't, don't get too carried away yet because – there are some concerning signs. I'm not going to say there's no concern for 98 all. There obviously is there. I'll show you why in a minute. But just know with these young, fledgling sort of tropical st systems, with the computer models, they can go crazy. They jump all over the place. Don't freak out until there's a reason to be concerned. Okay. This is a satellite presentation of the storm tonight. The first thing you'll notice is it's kind of flat looking. You have a wave axis right here, but all the thunderstorms are down here. and They're kind of being blown off to the south. And that is thanks to Fiona, actually. The upper levels of Fiona actually rotate counter uh, rotate clockwise and there's a lot of outflow in the upper levels like the exhaust of fiona basically the jet wash of fiona if you will is pounding 98l right now strong upper level winds you can see this depicted well on the europeans wind shear chart uh fiona right here all that upper level wind coming out of fiona coming down and then this little tag down here would be where 98l roughly is you can see this massive red just pushing down the storm and that's what's keeping it pretty weak right now it's got some dry air to deal with as well you have uh, some arc clouds racing out on the northern side of it right before sunset there so get some dry air and you've got that outflow from fiona crushing this thing so it's going to have a hard time in the short term and you're close to south america the closer further south you are in latitude the harder it is for these things to spin up so in the short term you've got the upper level flow you've got some dry air and you've got potential land interaction if this thing gets too close to south america and you've got a lot of short-term issues that 98l has to overcome before it even becomes a named storm with that in mind, let's go ahead and talk about the future of 98L. So this thing is going to move up into the Caribbean. It's going to probably gain enough latitude to miss South America, and it's going to wind up in the central uh, Caribbean Sea sometime, you know, Saturday into Sunday, maybe into early Monday. Okay, here's the first checkpoint. Here's the first concern that the system will find itself in a really favorable environment sometime. We're going to show you just 12Z Sunday or 15Z Sunday. We'll show you Sunday uh, early afternoon, late morning. Okay, This would be the storm around this time. The upper level pattern in the Western Caribbean is going to be picture perfect or pretty damn close to it. We have established dual poleward outflow channels and equatorward outflow channels. Beautiful outflow on both ends. Uh, Fiona will be long gone, and there's no weather systems impacting it there's no big upper troughs there's no cold fronts coming it is pretty much in its own world down here and given that along with the anticipated moist atmosphere and very warm water over the western caribbean remember this water hasn't really been touched by storms this year it's going to have a pretty freaking good environment to be strengthening if it's put together and doing its thing so in the short term, our first checkpoint is this. How does the storm look when it finds this environment? Do we have a storm that's already developed? The GFS, for example, is kind of being a little bit overzealous. The GFS develops is pretty fast. You can see here already showing you potentially a tropical storm by the time it gets to the Lesser Antilles. It already has a pretty coherent storm before Sunday. It's on Saturday. So we have it entering this environment. Remember, like right now, this environment's pretty great. It's perfect for it. And it's entering the environment as an already pretty strong storm. And it's already gained some latitude. On the European model, it's a little bit different story. The wave is a little bit further south. And it's weaker going into Friday, Saturday, and then it takes until Sunday to where it really kind of becomes a more coherent, stronger storm. And then it finds that environment and it goes from there. Okay, in the short term, the latitude and placement of the storm, timing and latitude, the European's a little bit faster. The GFS is a little bit slower. Um, we'll show you 9Z on Saturday or Sunday, rather. So you can see there's some short-term placement differences in intensity and where exactly the storm is. 
the next checkpoint we will have over the weekend is, okay, our storm is here. It's developing. How strong is the trough coming out of the eastern U.S. in that time frame? There's going to be a really strong trough, okay, coming down uh, Monday along the eastern seaboard. You have a high pressure over the plains. You have high pressure offshore in the Atlantic. You have this break between them. The storm wants to go into that break. The, the, the concern is twofold because we have to wonder how strong is Hermine at this point? Is she a low-grade hurricane that's pretty vertically stacked and tall and feels this weakness? Or is she weaker and a bit further south? Do we have a storm down here? Do we have a storm up here? And number two, how strong is this trough? On the GFS, this trough is pretty strong. It's showing the trough you know, extending all the way down to the Gulf Coast. This would be combined with a stronger, more northward Hermine, very likely to find each other, and she'd be likely to pull more north into the Gulf of Mexico or over Cuba into Florida, Central Gulf Coast, something like that. The European model already showing you that some things are different. The euro moves the highs around a little bit. It has a more amplified ridge over the eastern U.S. or the central U.S. And this trough's not quite as strong. It's a little flatter and it's not as uh, tilted. So you've got potentially a bit weaker storm at this time on, on Monday. And you've got a weaker trough. So does is this enough for Hermine to still feel the weakness? If Hermine is weak enough, she may not feel that trough. Say in a couple days, this trough on the model is even weaker, and Hermine is a little bit weaker as well. She takes longer to develop. All of a sudden, you don't have that draw north, and you've got the storm moving more westward to the Yucatan Peninsula, Central America, and then your whole forecast is already blown. So, uh, you know, I'll, I'll show you. I'll just go ahead and take the GFS over here just for illustration purposes. You know, it's stronger trough, stronger storm, feels each other. It pulls it up into the Gulf of Mexico. So you're going to see a, a model run like this on some weather page. And some guy's going to go, oh, look, there's a Category 5 hurricane coming for Tallahassee. Oh, God. But let me show you the last, the runs today. The GFS, one run ago on 12Z Thursday. This is Thursday morning. Okay, so Thursday morning of next week. So this is nine days from tonight. So the GFS, a uh, run ago. About the same thing. A run before that, it was already in the southwest Florida. A run before that, okay, about there. So over today, it's been more consistent. Let's go back to yesterday. All right, same thing, yesterday evening. Ooh, you know, eight runs ago, it was showing it into the Yucatan. Wow, that's, well, that's different. All at the same time, I'm showing you 12Z Thursday, every run, just different runs of the GFS. This model runs four times a day. It makes four guesses per day. Guess before that. Oh, suddenly it's all the way back here. The timing has completely changed. So you see what I mean? See how the GFS is just going to bouncing around with the storm still? Because it doesn't really know. Bottom line is we don't really know. The ensemble show a big spread. There's still a lot of possibilities. We're going to have to watch in the short term. Does it gain enough latitude to miss land and have any crazy interruptions there? How fast does it begin to develop once it gets out of Fiona's jet wash and finds that better environment? in the central caribbean does it take another two days for it to finally spin up or does it just does it just flip the switch and it gets going quick okay going into sunday monday how strong is it near jamaica is it going to feel that upper influence of the trough early next week or is it weaker and goes further west and then from there you know if it pulls north and it's pretty strong then it's time to worry because somebody from florida to the central gulf coast is going to get smacked so that's if no there's a lot of things between now and then so what I'd say tonight is folks along the central Gulf Coast, that's Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Panhandle of Florida, and the Florida Peninsula itself. Someone on the west coast of Florida could get this directly, and that includes, you know, impacts going to the rest of the Florida Peninsula. And then folks in the southeast, you know, Georgia and, um, you know, folks like that need to keep aware as well. Uh, Cuba, the Yucatan Peninsula, even Central America needs to probably keep an eye on this. But it's a little early to be doom and glooming and running for the hills because these computer models are flipping everybody out because they do that this time of year. But we do know that if it's pretty well developed and it finds that nice, good environment and it feels the influence of that trough, we're going to have a problem on our hands and someone's probably going to have a bad time. So just tonight, in the next couple days, watch and wait and see. We'll hit our checkpoints and we'll figure it out as we go. But um, it's this time of year. You should have your hurricane plan ready. You should be able to drop it and execute it within three days. That's what I'll say tonight. So that's what I got for you guys tonight on 98L. We'll keep tracking this. We'll keep tracking the rest of the tropics, Fiona, and everything else. And we'll have updates as they come along. So that's what I got for you guys tonight. As always, thanks for watching and have a good one.